So in today's video, we're going to do an oldie worldie portrait and we're going to print it using the traditional salt printing technique. <laughs> In today's video, we went out in the snow to produce a photograph which we could print using one of the earliest photographic printing techniques, known as the salted paper print. The Edwardians did as well. I am using heat packs <laughs> on my toes. Humans have understood optics and built primitive cameras since the days of Plato and Aristotle. Prior to the birth of photography, artists would trace from the optical image, but in the 1820s the first image was created using a photochemical process. In the 1830s, artist Louis Daguerre and British inventor William Henry Fox Talbot devised their own practical processes, and photography as we know it today was born. Today we're looking at Fox Talbot's slightly less complicated process. Fox Talbot's first breakthrough was to soak the paper in salt water, and then brush on a separate silver nitrate solution. This allowed the salt exchange to happen directly on the paper. Talbot would then lay plants onto his sensitized paper and leave it in the sun. The plants would block light and the areas around them would darken. This created what he referred to as photogenic drawings. We would refer to them as very early negatives. Talbot continued to develop his system, eventually settling on a system that allowed him to develop the latent image which is similar to what we'd know today. He called it the color type, which means beautiful impression in Greek. I should really get another tripod, but um, this is the last bit of my dad's kit that I still use. So I'm trying to keep it in operation as long as possible. An interesting footnote to this story was that Louis Daguerre gave his invention to France and the world. Fox Talbot, however, tried to maintain control of it to make money. So instead of spending the rest of his life perfecting the process, he spent it in litigation. The world remembers him in a way that's not so favorable. You might even say in a way that's a bit negative. We got a great negative in the end, which is fantastic. I was a little bit nervous about doubling my development time. I'd never done that before. But it just goes to show, if you get your exposure right, you can do all sorts of evil in the development process and still get a good result. And I got the slightly more higher contrasty negative that I needed because the salt printing process needs a contrasty neg. It's not a very contrasty process in its own right. Later on, you can start adding gold toning and you can start adding gelatin to the mix which will mean that the emulsions and things don't soak into the paper and you'll get a sharper picture. But today I'm just going to show you the simplest way of making a salt print, the way that's worked for me in the past. So the first thing I need to do is salinate a sheet of paper, which means that I'm going to just dip my paper into salt water for about five minutes. I let it dry. Once it's bone dry, I take my silver nitrate solution and I brush it onto the area where I'm going to be contact printing my negative. I'm then going to give it some light and then once I get the sort of the right amount of exposure what I'm going to do is wash off the silver nitrate solution and everything goes a little bit of a muddy brown but that's saved when you put it into the fixing solution which is a very stripped down version of a normal fixer that we use when we're doing the film it's just sodium theosulfate once that's done I wash all that off again for five six seven minutes and then I hang it out to dry and I should have a really nice print at the end of it. So the first thing we need to do is salinate some watercolor paper. For the salt solution, mix 20 grams of sodium chloride or ammonium chloride for one liter of clean tap water. You can use regular sea salt, but don't use regular table salt. I soak my paper in the salt solution for around five minutes. Not everybody does this. Some people think it's a bad idea to soak the paper, and they would prefer to just gently coat it on one side. Try it both ways and see what works for you. While the salted paper is off drying, I need to mix up the silver nitrate solution. And for that, I need two containers, each with 50 milliliters of distilled water in it. The reason it's distilled water is silver nitrate is very, very sensitive to contamination. So you need the cleanest water you can find. 
So I need 50 milliliters distilled water in each one of these jam jars, which of course have been thoroughly cleaned out since they contain jam. Silver nitrate is an extremely slippery customer and whatever it touches, it will turn a deep ready brown and eventually black. It can stain your fingers, and it will stain your clothes, furniture, anything. I mean, I'm not kidding. My cat used to be white. Into the first solution, place six grams of citric acid and into the second, 12 grams of silver nitrate. When they have both fully dissolved in their independent solutions, Combine the two solutions and immediately put it into a lightproof container. Our salted paper is dry now, so now it's time to brush the solution on. Make sure you're wearing gloves because you don't want to touch it any more than you have to because again, pretty much anything will upset this process. So take one of your sheets, it will be salted on both sides, and then take um, an old 5-4 negative if you're lazy or measure it out if you're not, and just lay it over where you want the emulsion to be and take a fairly hard pencil and just mark off the edges of where you want it to be. This will also serve, you can put a little X or something up in the top because the actual solution, because the actual solution paper is invisible. You won't know which side that you put the solution and if you put it in the frame the wrong way up and it's not directly against the solution, you will get some image as the light goes through the paper but um, it's not going to be what you want. So. This will serve to show you which side you put the silver nitrate solution onto and it'll also show you where to put it. Make sure your brush is as clean as possible because again, contaminants. So when these are ready, put them somewhere dark to dry. A wardrobe, a closet, a drawer, your soul, whatever's darkest. So once your paper is completely dry, it's time to expose it to the light. Now you can do this using a printing frame, which is very useful because it has a hinged back and it allows you to check the exposure without affecting the registration. But you can also use a clip frame, which although it will work, doesn't give you as much flexibility to check the exposure without pissing off the registration. So what I have here is the paper and I have my negative in my frame and I just place the paper, the side down that we marked against the emulsion side of the negative. I put my back in and I clip it shut. As a light source, I'm using this metal halide lamp, but you can use the sun, or you can use pretty much any lamp that kicks out a decent amount of UV, like a fluorescent or something like that. So I'm going to leave this to expose for between six minutes and half an hour. I've not done this negative before, but I can check it every five minutes to see how it's getting on. So you should really check on your print every five to 10 minutes, depending on how long your exposure is. So I can see here that something really doesn't look right. To me anyway. I've got my red silver nitrate exposure around here, but I've also got this much lighter gray that's coming up here. So I know this isn't right. Now, it's either gonna be that my mixture was contaminated at some point, which could be anything from the paper to the brush to anything that it comes in contact with. Or I didn't manage to get the salt to soak through the paper properly. So if I open it up and have a look and see what we can find. Another potential culprit could be over salting the paper as well. As you get more experience, you'll get used to troubleshooting these problems. You can see it's a very light color. Now this isn't right. So I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of troubleshooting. But before I do that, I'm going to finish my exposure and take you through what happens next. Once your print's properly exposed, you wash off any excess silver nitrate by running it under a cold tap for around five minutes. You can then fix your solution to make it light tight using a dilution of sodium thiosulfate, which is basically a hypo fixer. This was Fox Talbot's magic discovery as well that he managed to find a way to make the images light safe. So you fix your image for about five minutes in your fixer 
and then wash off your hypo for about five minutes under a tap. Maybe a bit more, you can wash it for less if you've got a hypo clearing agent. Once you've done that, you can dry your print and you should have your very own salt print. And that's how you produce a Victorian portrait. There are other ways you can use wet plate or tin type, but this is one of the earliest and purest photographic processes. It can be frustrating, it can be messy, but it's, in the end, it's incredibly rewarding. And we got some images which really do look like they're 150 years old. That said, doing it at home can be a little bit tricky. Um, you might have noticed my snazzy nails. That's because I managed to get silver nitrate stains on my nails, even using gloves. And my other half has lovingly painted my nails for me so I don't look like such a mess. <laughs> You'll be able to find a full write-up with full written recipes on ollitography.com. I'll also leave a list of useful links in the description below. The book that I was working from was called Spirits of Salts. And as ever, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, get down, party like it's 1899, and I'll see you in the next video.